Hi, this is the Chemistry for Biology channel. I'm John Irwin. We're talking about Zinc-15, and this work is brought to you by the University of California, San Francisco, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, the Irwin Lab and the Scheuchert Lab, and the work is supported by the NIH. Today's topic is chemical search in zinc. And I'd like to start by just introducing the fact that we're going to do three different kinds of chemical search. We're going to, so we're talking about looking for molecules based on their chemical composition. And um, so one is exact, so show me exactly the molecule. And when we mean exact, we mean exact. Number two is substructure search, so find me all the molecules that contain this moiety. And substructure search can include both molecules as well as SMARTS patterns. And thirdly, similarity. So find me all the molecules that are similar to my molecule. And um, again, before we get too deep into this, I wanted to give you some caveats. Zinc-15 is an evolving system. We've published a paper, but it will continue to evolve during 2016. Uh, a few things, as we're going to see in this presentation, don't quite work yet, and we're working on it. And I'm going to show you a workaround. These videos will be updated when these problems have been solved. So we'd like to draw your attention to this paper we've just published in at JCIM. Uh, it's called Zinc-15 Ligand Discovery for Everyone, and it's uh, free to download. We welcome your uh, review of it, and we hope you'll uh, write to us and tell us what you think. So we're going to switch uh, into the Zinc-15 system. Zinc-15.docking.org is where my browser is pointing. And we're going to get started with chemical search. So we're going to use substances here from the navigation bar. And as you can see on the left hand side we have a drawing panel thanks to Peter Edel and Bruno Bianfe and that's where we can draw molecules and on the right hand side it's the, the ability to search for multiple molecules at the same time and that's the subject of a different uh, video. So if we get started with a, a drawing we can simply draw something in here so let's try oops, clear, draw one and then we'll look for something like that. And let's start with a similarity search. So there's two, so exact search, substructure search, Tanamoto or dice are two different kinds of similarity search. And so we're going to try a similarity search. So we're now searching against 150 million or more fingerprints, ECFP4, Morgan Radius 2 in, in RD kit parlance. And that uh, search is happening right now in real time, and it's going to show us the molecules sorted in decreasing order of similarity with a Tenomoto coefficient for each uh, similarity. Here's our search result, and the molecules are sorted in decreasing similarity. So the most similar one was 79% similar. And as you can see, it doesn't really change the similarity much if there's a second fennel ring in the pattern. Um, which of these molecules is commercially available? This, by the way, is an exhaustive search. So this is every molecule better than 0 0.6 in Tenomoto, um, or whatever our cutoff happens to be. At the moment, it's 0 0.6. So we say, well, which of these is actually for sale? So we're going to use the label tag to rerun the search, this time with applying a commercially available criterion. And we could have equally well, asked, well have asked, uh, how many of these are FDA approved? Turns out none of them is. So I'll save you the trouble. So here's uh, this, this compound is actually commercially available. And so if we go into it, we can see this is the molecule detail page. And you can see that it's available from this company called FCH Group uh, Building Blocks. And if you take this link and click on it, it'll take you straight to their website where you can buy the compound and it's available in 20 working days and you need to make an inquiry. So it's a make on demand and it's going to be probably in the order of, well you have to check with them, but probably on the order of hundreds of dollars for a gram or, or a 100, 100 milligram quantity, preparative quantity. So we're going to go back to zinc and so that's an illustration of similarity. Now I've clicked on the draw button to bring us back to the drawing tool. So now 
we're going to use the substructure tool. And so when we search here, we're going to ask for, show us all the molecules that have this moiety, this chemical structure, as a substructure. And as you can see in the URL, the it's been uh, URL encoded. And the substructure itself is highlighted, so you can see. Um, now, uh, this remember in the um, query molecule, it was one large ring. But of course, the the one the program says, oh yes, but I'm now I'm tracing the large ring, and it doesn't care whether there's a bond that bridges the the large ring here. Okay, so you see how the the that um, ring system is matched by this pattern. So again, you can ask for ask for which of these is commercially available, which of these is available in building block quantities, which one of ones of these is a world drug and so on, or simply ask how many of these compounds are there. And so if you do counting, it's going to run the query and, and give us a count of the number of molecules so we know how many there are. Ah, it's taking too long. Should we try it one more time? Let's do it one more time. This gives me a chance to tell you that uh, Zinc is a very big database. There's a lot of molecules. And if you want an accurate count of the number of molecules um, over out of 150 million with a smart, with a pattern like this, with a sim, uh, substructure pattern, it takes a little bit, of time, little bit of time to compute that. We're doing everything in real time. None of this is cached. So um, while we're waiting for that result to come back, I'm going to open right mouse click this particular molecule in a new window. And when we look at that here, we're going to go back. So you, this is where I clicked before to draw. So we can go back to the drawing program and see this. And of course, we can edit it. You can also search for smarts. So for instance, if you wanted to look for aliphatic amines, CX4, so a carbon with four substituents, so it's an sp3 carbon, ND1, so it's a nitrogen with one heavy atom substituent, so it's effectively a primary amine. Now if you search for that using the current system, um, first of all you'll notice that the picture didn't get transferred correctly into here. So this gives me a chance to tell you that this is an area where, that we're still working on. And if you try to do uh, substructure search using this tool, you'll get an error and it says, oh, I couldn't figure this out. However, if you, if you use, if you edit the URL and just put in CX4 ND1 up there and then do that, then it will find you molecules and containing uh, alif primary aliphatic amines. So there's the amine is there and there's the tetrahedral carbon amine, tetrahedral carbon, amine, tetrahedral carbon, amine, tetrahedral carbon. So that's sort of fun. So uh, obviously that's something we want to fix, but we wanted to show you the workaround on how to do uh, substructure searches uh, until we get that interface uh, completed. And as always, with all of our queries, you can always download them in SDF, MOL2, and so on, Smiles. So if you ask for the molecules to be downloaded, you'll get them there. And then once you've got them, you can load them in third-party applications like the Azuras Data Warrior. And so um, we hope that this kind of interface will make it very easy for you to get molecules, play with them in other applications, and interact uh, between Zinc and other programs. So was that helpful? Have you learned something about chemical search, similarity search, and substructure search in Zinc? If you like this video, you're welcome to subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook or Twitter. This research is supported by the National Institutes of Health.